Please accept this video as a formal apology if you disagree with this ranking. I think everyone's favorite book is my least favorite. It's gonna be a bit of a hot take, but we'll see what happens. Let's begin with Unsold. Now, I've seen a lot of people not liking this book. I've seen so many threads where people are like, oh, you need to get through the first book to get to the good stuff. And I strongly disagree. I think it's an excellent book, although there is some merit because this book is mostly Linden. Then there's a bit of Yeren at the end, but there really aren't a lot of main characters in this one. However, in the second book, you meet quite a bit of main characters, but it's a great introduction to the world and Serial's vision sets up what you should expect in future books really well. I would give this an S tier, but ranking is comparative, so I'll give this an A. So yeah, by the way, these rankings are not absolute. They're relative to each other, obviously. Book number two, Soulsmith. So much happens in this book. You get to know Yeren better. You meet Fisher Gesha, Jai Long, who's an excellent antagonist. Ethan, who's a major, major character. Linden advances to Iron in this book. He was unsold. What? That's huge. Azriel is mentioned as corrupt. Jai Long challenges Linden to a duel, which is sick. Aethan adopts Linden and Yeren. All sorts of major events. I'll give this one also an A, but I'll actually put it behind the first book. Controversial, I know, but honestly, I like the novelty of the first book. I also really like that the first book is about privilege. It doesn't matter how hard Linden works because he is always unsold to the people in the valley. It defies this idea of you're the problem. If you only woke up at 3 a.m. and started working, you'd also become a billionaire kind of garbage grind approach. In the next book, Linden also becomes super privileged as Ethan takes him in. But, you know, solid A. Book number three, Black Flame. In this one, we meet Orthos. We meet Little Blue, I think, too, right? They do a garbage obstacle course, like Takashi's Castle or something. I hate those kind of sections in these books. Then Jai Daishu tries to coup against the Aurelius family, but Aethan obliterates him. Linden becomes low gold, Yeren high gold. And Yeren's advancement is pretty cool because she absorbs her master remnant ribbon thingy. Suriel gets a message from Osriel. So now we're like, wait a minute, maybe he isn't the bad guy after all. Also, Little Blue fixes Jai Chen, and it kind of looks like there's going to be a romance between Jai Chen and Linden. But then the author changes his mind, I guess. I think the plan was different in this book. I think after this book, Will White changed his mind and it cost us two great characters, Jai Long and Jai Chen. We'll talk about it later, but this book is a solid B for me. By this book, I was a bit frustrated by the lack of world building. Everyone just tries to beat each other up and honestly, it just never changes. We get like one restaurant scene in the whole series. I can't even remember if there's any other social scenes in this whole series. People just do nothing in this universe other than martial arts. No one has any hobbies. Like, oh my god, can Zeal sing or something? I don't know. Like, sit around a fire and eat potatoes and chat a bit? Dude, no, it's all beating each other up. I accepted it eventually, but... I hadn't at this book. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like to let me know. That's the best way to support the channel. And if you're feeling adventurous, maybe subscribe too. Anyway, the next one is a huge stinker. I'm sorry, it's Sky Sorn. It's one of the worst books in the series. Maybe the worst. I'm just gonna give it an F. Nothing really happens. Sky Sorn is like the police of the Empire, I guess. They had taken Linden into custody for practicing Black Flame. Then there's a duel. Jai Long cuts Linden's arm. He gets a cooler arm. I'm also a bit frustrated with the linear progression at this point. Like even losing his arm doesn't stagnate his growth. Can we have some real obstacles, please? No, it's all linear growth. It's also something I eventually accepted. It actually becomes exponential growth at points later, but really never an actual loss. Bad book. Moving on to Ghostwater. A lot of people's favorite book. One of my least favorite. I mean, yeah, it had Dross, Zeal, Mercy, and North Strider. I guess those characters are cool and important. This book was all dungeon crawling. I got so board. I'm just gonna give it an F and put it at the bottom. I don't know why you guys love this so much. Explain in the comments. Thankfully, after two stinkers, we have an excellent top tier book, Underlord 
I really like the Underlord revelations. I like when progression is more than physical. I like it when it has implications for the characters themselves. Linden doesn't want to be worthless. Yeren doesn't want to lose anyone. Then for the tournament, Yeren ends up in the Black Flame team while Linden on Akura team. Yeren fights her blood shadow and Mercy's limitations get lifted. There are so many cool scenes. Mercy defying the Akura family culture. She's kind, not malicious. Then at the end, Kelsa meets Orthos. I think it's an overall S tier book, okay? I felt very satisfied. The next one is Uncrowned. This is a whole tournament type of book. I thought it was gonna be super boring, but it was not boring. I think this is the first time they mention that Sacred Valley has like a power limiting thing going on. I was so frustrated by that. It didn't make any sense to me for so long, but finally some explanation. Super vague, but still. We also find out there's a problem with monarchs refusing to ascend. There's that cool scene where Linden challenges everyone in the Akura family and beats the shit out of them. There's of course Linden Yeren fight. I was so angry at it, but you know, it was a good fight. Then they move in together. Super cute. It sort of presses every button. It wasn't as emotionally stimulating to me as Underlord. So I'll give this an A tier and I'll rank it over Unsold actually. The next one is my favorite book in the series overall. It's Winter Steel, so we can't top it. It's the top S tier book. I'll just say it. The series stagnates quite a bit after this one, unfortunately. But boy, this book is excellent. So we have that fun moment of Linden collecting point. It's such a Linden thing. I thought it was so funny. Linden starts using the consume technique Again, very Linden-like. We learn how Yeren's master died. We learn that Sacred Valley holds a subject one, the first Dread God. There's an incredible fight between Aethan and Shamiara where Aethan just annihilates her in nine seconds. You're like, oh, wait a minute, who is this guy really? Mercy makes Linden and Yeren go on a date? The first and only social scene ever in the entire series. It's such a fun day too. Rhaegon Shen bribes Aethan to leave the tournament. There's that super cool scene where Yeren's blood shadow is holding a bunny. Yeren thinks she killed it, but she just wanted to hold it. She names her Ruby, then Ruby goes to Linden by herself. Yeren leaves her master's path, basically. She advances by saying she's not her master. Then Yeren and Ruby combine. Linden manifests the freaking void icon and becomes a sage, then destroys the Farnatoth. Yeren wins the tournament and kills the Shetkunats. There's that super emotional scene where Aethan makes a sage unsold badge for Linden. And I'm like, okay, let's just end the series here. It's great. Jai Long appears first time in a long time. I'm so sad that Jai Long got wasted like this. He could have been an excellent antagonist. I don't think Rhaegon Shen is a good enough antagonist, honestly. I will never get over the fact that we lost Jai Long. But then the most important moment, of course, Yeren and Linden kiss. Boy, slow burn much. Dude, the slowest burn romance ever and I'm here for it. S tier, the best book in the series, moving on. Bloodline, this book should have been the huge culmination of everything we've been through. Instead, there are no satisfying resolutions. We are back at Sacred Valley. No revenge is taken. Hardly anyone is rescued. Linden can't gain any respect. Sacred Valley is as ignorant as ever. On top of it, Linden doesn't let go, they don't realize their ignorance, and we lose trust. It is realistic that everyone at Sacred Valley is an idiot, but it was not satisfying. I'll give it a D. Reaper, another dungeon crawling book. Didn't like it. Regan Shan fight was cool. Linden takes over the labyrinth, so that's cool. Dross is still gone, and there's a pretty big reveal at the end that Aethon is Osriel. So I give it a C. And the last book is Dread God. Honestly, I was super disappointed. I'm trying to remember what happened in this book. And even though it's the last one, I barely remember it. I guess Linden is kind of a Dread God now. He'll maybe skip Monarch or something. I don't know, didn't like it, but we'll give it a D. All right, that was my final definitive ranking of all 11 Cradle books. Let me know your ranking in the comments. I feel like I'll see a ton of Ghostwater number ones, but I hope you enjoy this video. 
If you want to check out my individual creator reviews, here are some videos and I'll see you next time.